So you said you wanted to know a bit more about Tesla Autopilot and today I just got the update for the Navigating Autopilot here in the UK. So I've got a trip up to Manchester today so I thought that um, I'll see what it looks like. There's a few other updates as well with regards to the Tesla. <laughs> So I'm not sure how long uh, this video is going to record for. I'm using my new GoPro Hero 7 Black. I like my other GoPros where I can charge it whilst I'm using it. Um, idiot error. I, I assumed, I don't know why I assumed this, but incorrectly, um, that I could do that um, with this um, 7. But I had a different um, charging cable it's not really as easy to do it um, with the case on. So I have got a reasonable amount of um, battery, so I should be able to give you kind of some insights. But yeah, so the car, the car, the car. So let me just uh, see where we are. So a few of you said you're still interested in autopilot, what it's like here in the UK. So this morning before I got off of this trip, I took a bit of risk, it said it'd take 50 minutes to do the update, and it pretty much did. So I'm now running, uh, obviously this is a Tesla Model S 2017, 75 kilowatts. I'm now running, uh, obviously version nine software, 2019.16.2, and I have uh, navigation data, EU 2018, 42.1729. So in this uh, update, there's a few things actually that happened. Um, so you might have read about it online. There's basically been some, I can't remember what they call it now, EU or UN or some combination regulation which impacts Tesla's autopilot. It's basically about how much a steering wheel can be turned autonomously. And so what that means is uh, Tesla have had to kind of reduce the effectiveness of autopilot. So, that kind of sucks. Um, it's going to be interesting to see kind of what happens, especially on A and B roads. Basically, if you kind of come to a bend and the steering wheel has to turn too much, I'm guessing the autopilot just has to turn off and go, sorry, I could drive you around this bend, but I'm not allowed to. Um, so I'm sure it's because, you know, safety is at the heart of stuff. But that impacts, obviously, autopilot. Auto impacts summon as well. This is where you can kind of move the car forwards um, and backwards on its own. Uh, that now has to be within Bluetooth range of your phone, so 10 meters or where it is, is as being optimal, which is fine. Um, but it does uh, introduce an issue for those of us that are hoping to have either full self driving or kind of the semi autonomous summon where, you know, where it can kind of park itself and everything. That obviously won't be possible in the UK right now unless the laws or regulations change because clearly they want you to be within 10 meters um, to use someone so it's not going to let you uh, drive around automatically in the car park. The thing that I am most interested about is um, navigate on autopilot so they've had this in the US for a little while this is where basically um, within reason mainly on the motorways I'm going to have to tell uh, autopilot where I'm going and it should change lanes um, and come off you know, change junctions etc uh, automatically as well so due to some of those regulatory changes as well it does mean I have to confirm that I want it to change lane so basically to try and keep me at an optimum pace it will move in and out and around of cars and lorries etc um, so I'm interested to see how that's going to work and hopefully we have to see the overview enough to get a little flavor of how that's working um, they've also made a change to the driver visualization so on the front dash here where I had a, a car that looked a bit like my car um, it, it now reminds a little bit of the old arcade game Auto Run. So the car zooms in, out and around. It gives me much better visualization of where my car is on the road um, and where other cars are. And it kind of zooms in and out to give you a you know, much improved spatial awareness. So it's pretty damn cool. Um, so you should be able to see that as well when I position the camera uh, overhead. The plan is that you'll be able to see the dash um, and obviously the, the road ahead so you can see how well autopilot is working or not um, and then finally the really the other main one is a change to sentry mode so you could do you can enable sentry mode 
either from an app on your phone or by going into security on the main dash. Now when you've parked, there's a little sentry mode icon in the top kind of taskbar on the main screen. So that enables you to very quickly just kind of press and enable that. And you can also then set defaults as well now, whether you want sentry mode to kind of always come on or not. Um, but also set kind of parameters for if you have a home setting and a work setting, perhaps you don't need sentry mode on there because you trust where it is. Obviously when you're perhaps at the supermarket, you still want it to happen. So I'm still happy to do it manually, um, but it's good to have that. So uh, yeah, I'll be stopping uh, shortly at a junction. So what I'll do is I'll pull over and uh, switch the camera around. So it's uh, facing the dash on the road. And then hopefully we can see if this uh, navigating autopilot works the way we want it to. Okay, so we're just coming up to get on the motorway. I had to go into the settings to turn on the navigate and autopilot uh, kind of feature. So I had to kind of agree that it's uh, in beta format and obviously it's not uh, an autonomous option. So it's doing to pay attention. Um, and you get to change kind of what overtaking modes um, you like. So. It doesn't alter the safety, just the aggressiveness. So basically, if you're not, you know, if you're stuck behind someone slow, how quickly will it try and um, change lanes? So I left it on average. Mad Max is the next one up for that. Um, but uh, yeah, I just I stick with that first. Probably move to Mad Max a bit later. But uh, we're just setting a bit of traffic whilst we get onto the M5. One thing that is really cool is this um, enhanced dash. You can see everything a lot. Kind of clearer even just the fact that when the brake lights are on or off that might may seem like a stupid question but um obviously when the car is doing regenerative braking it's nice to be able to see when the braking has come on i'm not sure how well you can see it here but it's zooming in and out um kind of as needed and when the car turns left and right it does you can kind of see the car kind of turn uh in the display as well which is Really cool. I, that's one of my favorite things um, about Tesla is that continual kind of improvement all the time. Um, that's actually one of the improvements with this update. Now I'll have the ability to get updates to my car faster because I can decide that as soon as updates become available, I can get the car um, to have them applied as opposed to just waiting for when Tesla decides they want to deliver it to my specific car. So it be interesting to see kind of how that works in the future as updates come out. Um, I've set mine to the advanced option in the hope that I can get updates more quickly, but typical morning traffic here. Okay, so now we're getting on to the motorway. So I'll be able to set my uh, cruising speed and uh, turn on autopilot and uh, see if it does the navigation stuff that we want it to do. I'm not quite sure if nav navigate on autopilot needs to be blue over there. Let's just have a, let's get on the motorway first and sort ourselves out and then, uh, then we can fill up with things. So, okay, so it needs to be, needs to be blue I think. Right, let's uh, let's put autopilot on and see what happens. So, looks like navigating autopilot is on because we can see a blue line uh, on the dash there, which kind of indicates what lane we're in and what it's thinking about doing. So, we're set to 70, that's the speed limit here in the UK. Um, and as you can see, it's slowing us down a little bit. Okay, this guy's going to pull out in front of us, so that should slow us down, and hopefully, we'll give suggestion that we want to move around this vehicle because uh, there's nothing behind us okay it's it's trying to confirm the lane change to the right so I can do that and it's doing it <laughs> fantastic so it, it works which is really cool um, it's gonna be interesting what happens with that EU regulation because I know in the US once I kind of got out of the um, beta mode they enabled the car to kind of do those lane changes without you having to confirm but that's pretty damn awesome so um, 
replace the music now uh, there's only about 15 percent um battery left so um i just allow you guys to see kind of how this works and um the other thing is i've noticed that it's a lot more naggy if my hands aren't really firmly gripping the steering wheel to make sure that i'm not uh, trying to do autonomous driving so i just show if i take my hands off for a brief period of time it would normally take actually it's, it's not perhaps it is taking on just the sensitivity was a bit different but yeah it hasn't asked me to put my oh no it has so apply light force uh and so i'm doing that and there we are so i let you guys uh enjoy the view i'll purposely position myself into some of the slower lanes so we can see kind of how the, the navigating autopilot works um and i'll also i'll try and stop and then start the camera a little bit when we come to um a transition to a different motorway um junction because in theory it should sort that out itself as well so um the one thing that is good a few people commented that they didn't think that the one touch for lane change would be working anymore you'd have to push and hold that's not the case one touch and it will do um the change on its own so let's uh enjoy
Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.